How's it going, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar. Today, I am joined by this gentleman right here, who wants to be called Blade. It's your artist name, right? Yes, Omar? it is. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about this Kickstarter that you have going on. Uh, currently, it hasn't started yet as of this video, but it will be starting soon. Yes, 1st of November. 1st of November, I put up a uh, a uh, a link to the Kickstarter here on um, on the description of the video if you're curious about it. And Blade is going to tell us a little bit about this project. I did want to show just a little bit of the visuals here, it's what's going on. And you are the creator of Seed of War, correct? Yes, correct. Um, so initially, it was uh, yeah, first of all. Let me apologize for my uh, for my accent. <laughs> no, <laughs> you please can, don't. You can You're tell right. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not from uh, from the U.S. Um, so uh, yes, initially it's a role playing game uh, that I published last year, uh, thanks to another Kickstarter. And um, but I'm also a huge uh, comic book fan, and so it, it was always it, it's always been my dream to. Uh, <clears throat> to publish my own comic book and since i already had a, some kind of a universe um Thank for you, the Kevin. role playing game mm -hmm. uh it was um yeah i thought it would it would be a, a great opportunity to uh to make a, a comic book based on that uh, setting okay so for those of you not aware this all started as a role playing game it's a tabletop game correct yes correct uh, that you all did on kickstarter how long ago was that when you, you all um that was december 2018. okay december 2018. uh how many people were involved with the seeds of wars uh we had 670 backers i think we no, connected I'm sorry how many oh. of you all behind the scenes like oh sorry story, yeah yeah storyteller. Uh, so there were six writers um and then uh, a lot of illustrators from all around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, of course, uh, I mean, uh, uh, graphic designer and uh, translator, because the, the, the game exists in, in English. Uh, the original ver version is in English because all the writers were from uh, the US or the UK. Um, uh, apart from me, uh, but um, but uh, there, there is a version in French as well, because French is my mother language. Gotcha. OK. Well, your English is on point, man. You're doing well, amazing. Seriously. Thank you very much. Um, so how did that idea come about? Let's talk about that, and then we'll move on to the graphic novel that you guys are going to do and look at some of the uh, artwork that you've, um, you've got for us. How did the idea of a tabletop role-playing game come about? Like, were you all fans of tabletop games and you all were like, hey, I have this idea. How did you connect with everybody? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll try to make it quick. Uh, so yeah, I, I've been playing uh, tabletop games for 35 years. And um, there was one game in particular that I really liked, uh, but it was only published between 95 and 98. Um, they, they, they stopped it in 98, but we, me and my friends, we kept playing that game for uh, 20 years, and then um, I tried to I tried to buy the the license uh, from from the from the company that owns the game, uh, but they they didn't even ask me how much I was willing to pay for it. They really didn't, they, they really were not interested in selling their their license. Uh, so I thought, okay, then I'll make then I'll make my own game, uh, and uh, so I made a kind of a modern version of, of that old uh, game. And then together you got, uh, did you know uh, these people that you worked with on the game? Oh no, so uh, what I did is, um, so I didn't know anybody. So that's the thing. I mean, since I started on Kickstarter, so mm -hmm. in 2018, we got a, a second campaign uh, in 2020 for a web application, still for that game, still for the same game. Uh, that was also successful um but so i i had to learn like 10 new jobs uh over the last three years um as a writer as a publisher uh creating kickstarter doing marketing uh 
shipping this, uh, shipping and, and all, all those things that you have to take into account uh, when, when you're doing a, a Kickstarter, especially if you're uh, producing physical goods, then um, yeah, you have to learn lots of things and you have to collaborate with lots, lots of people. And so I was looking for writers and what I did is I went on the, on the Gen Con uh, website. Oh yeah, Gen Con. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the, the people who were, um, um, uh, how do you say, uh, who were um, speaking during the Gen Con, you know, they, they are inviting, they have guests, uh, yeah. writers, mm -hmm. they invite writers to, uh, to talk about a particular subject. And I just looked at all the writers who were there and I just contacted all of them. And uh, and I just hired our main writer like that. Uh, so and it's the same for the comic book. I didn't know any artist uh, personally. I mean, so I just contacted like thirty, yeah, over thirty uh, artists um, whom I liked, and one of them accepted to uh, to help me in this adventure. Uh, this is exciting. So now that kick, Kickstarter was successful. So the role-playing game was successful. And now you're wanting to expand this, right? Like you want uh, to do a graphic novel. And that's what yes. we're here to talk about Indeed. is the Seeds of Wars, Sky oh, God Day. Yeah. Fantasy graphic novel with a twist of science fiction. I do like Indeed. that. Then this will be going live on November 1st. So can you give me just a little bit of the synopsis of the story? This artwork looks amazing. I think that's the very first thing when you emailed me months ago. That's the first thing I said was, wow, this art is up my alley. I love this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the artist is, is really talented. Um, and uh, and he, I mean, he's a, he's a professional uh, artist, I, I, should, mm -hmm. I should say, uh, because this is clearly my first, uh, my first book as a writer. But um, but um, he he has published a dozen books for a for a very big uh, one of the biggest uh, French uh, publisher comic book publisher. Um, okay. uh, I don't know if I don't know if um, if uh, people are aware of that, but uh, of course in the U.S. Uh, you have you have the comics. I mean you have you have Marvel, you have DC, um, and then in Asia you have all the manga manga or I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, but uh, but in Europe, especially in, in, in France and in Belgium, you have a certain type of, um, of comic books that is that is very popular. Um, uh, and uh, and so uh, the artist uh, who's working with me is in that type of, of comic books. But we thought, OK, let's try to convince um, people in america <laughs> to uh to uh to give it a try you know because it, it, it is it is kind of a different style um there are there are some differences if if you like if you only read uh marvel comics it is it is different you know? I, I i completely agree with you and not just marvel or dc but it is it's a different um approach at graphic novels uh, the base is still there, like everything is still the same, but the way that the stories are done, the storytelling format, European styles have a different style. And it's one that, much like manga, it takes some getting used to, and there's nothing wrong with that. I've, some of my favorite uh, co collected editions come from Europe, and oh my goodness, there are some wonderful stuff. And for people that are not reading anything out of you know, their own continent, you're really missing out. So I'm really glad that you approached me about this because I do want to make people aware here in America about the specific project that you're working on. And will this be, what languages are you all? And again, I'm going to just showcase the artwork and the design of the book. Um, what languages will these uh, these books be in? Well, again, the original version is in English. Um, and so the, the, the Kickstarter is for the English version. Um, but then we are launching... Um, uh, another campaign on another platform that is more Euro European based. Uh, okay. Just one, just one week after after the, the Kickstarter for the for the French version. Okay, so, so we'll have two campaigns in parallel. Okay, so English and French. Yes, yes. And there will be a digital copy of this and a printed copy of of the indeed, book. Right? Indeed, yes, correct. Okay, what I'm one of the biggest things, and I know you you haven't. Uh, 
gone live with this yet, but one of the biggest things on the channel whenever I have a creator on and the importance of this, and I know it may be silly, but the dimensions of the book, will this be like um, like a bigger book? Will it be a trade paperback bound? Yeah, or which, you know, so or yes, as, as compared to, to the usual uh, Marvel comics, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it is different. So it, it's the standard European type of book. So it's... Okay. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> but I don't know. The in, uh, in, in, yeah, it's a different that's system. That's okay. That's okay. Um, uh, let me see if I have, I don't have, oh, I can, I can pick, I can pick. Oh, one please, of please. Yes. Let's have a little visual here. Cause I know that that may not, that sounds silly, but that is important to a lot of people is how big the books are, what kind of format will be available. Will it be a hardcover, soft cover. So this is one that was actually made by, by the, the artist I'm working with, um, so um so it is i'm gonna uh, highlight you it's only uh so it's only around 50 pages uh-huh um and uh and the, the format okay for for the people <laughs> who, uh, who want to make the conversion this this is approximately 22 centimeters uh wide and 32 centimeters uh, uh yeah high we have and, to figure that out yeah exactly um <laughs> It's more or less an A4 format. So yeah, can, that's what uh, somebody else said in the chat. Can you show? Yeah, it. that's what we want to see. His art is stellar. And the fact that you guys are keeping it in this fantasy realm really makes me excited for this type of book. Um, so you, you mentioned page count in yes. this new book uh, that you guys are working on. What's What would be the page count for this particular so book? So there are, there are 48 pages of... So the story is 48 pages, and then... There are a few extra pages of sketches. Uh, there will be a few extra pages of sketches saw, at the end. Yeah, I saw some sketches here. That's awesome. Exactly. exactly. I, so, I like uh, that stuff. I like character designs. I like behind the scenes stuff. And there will be two different covers. Um, so there will be there will be a retail cover, um, mm -hmm. but then there will be a collector edition, um, uh, just for the just for the Kickstarter, so that you can only okay. get on, on Kickstarter. And it will be a different cover with um, um, the, the logo uh, of Seeds of Wars will be with golden, uh, yeah, golden ink kind of, yeah, golden uh, symbol. So mm -hmm. it will be, uh, yeah, a real collector edition. Okay, so we got 48 pages plus some sketches. Uh, and we've got the trim size of the book. It's it's going to be digital and in hardcover format. Those yes. are the formats that will be available when the Kickstarter goes live. Um, we don't have to get into the prices because that's something that you all can figure out when your Kickstarter goes live on November 1st. But is shipping available to the United States? Yes, yes. Um, so I will, I will do the same as I did for the role-playing game, um, meaning... It is printed in Europe, but uh, I just ship part of, of the production uh, uh, by boat uh, to the U.S. Okay. Uh, to to a to a company that is specializing um, in uh, shipping. Okay. Uh, they're in Seattle, uh, and and then they ship uh, throughout the U.S. and and to Canada and, and South America and Australia as well. Okay, and so you guys are going. I, I just I just take care of the shipping in, in Europe then. Okay, so you are the writer on the book, correct? Yes, that's, correct. That's your yes. role, and your how is it? Um, and the and the publisher, <laughs> and the publisher. That's right. You yeah, guys, that's, that's a lot of work. Uh, how is that relationship that you have with the artist? You guys are in different countries. You said. Uh, true. Uh, so I live in Belgium, a very small country, just just above France, and. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the artist lives in uh, Serbia, uh, so a okay. bit more east, uh, Eastern Europe. Um, okay. So we ne we never met, um, especially because of the COVID. Of course, we could not travel, so we we haven't had a, a chance to to meet yet. But we we just uh, chat every day, basically. Um, and then whenever he uh, he finishes a page, he sends it over to me and then I send it over to the people who are uh, doing the, the coloring and um, and uh, yeah that's that's how that's how we work we have um, we have 16 completed pages uh, so far 
So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it should be it should be finished uh, early next year. So okay. uh, hopefully it will be printed uh, and available uh, for uh, next uh, spring. Okay, so that that was the other thing I was going to ask is with all of this uh, Kickstarter and taking um, people's different there's I assume there's going to be different tiers available like with sometimes yes. the dual original sketches and things like that exactly yes. will all the tiers be shipping out around the same time then like you're hoping this will be done sometime in early next year yeah, that, yeah. so you say early next year that's only a few months away though well yeah but yeah, that's <laughs> the thing I mean um, we so we have one third of the one third of the book is is, is uh, finished. The, the script, of course, is is already completed. So it's just uh, uh, I'm just waiting for the for the pages uh, from from the artist. Uh, mm -hmm. Coloring goes faster than drawing. So and, and they are doing both in in parallel. So every time I, every time the artist finishes a page, then I send it for coloring, and then so while he's you know while he continues to to draw, so we should have everything finished uh, at the same time more or less so um yeah I, I think and then printing doesn't take doesn't take that long actually because we we're not we're not going to print uh hundreds of thousands of copies you know uh, this is this is a, a question i have for creators because this seems like a very um it seems like a very important decision right is how many do you print okay you have enough copies for Kickstarter, right? Yeah. And then how many over that do you print as a creator? Because you want other people to read this book. And other people will see it on a YouTube channel called Near Mint Condition and go, hey, where can I get that book? And it's happened before where I get something um, that through Kickstarter and people are like, I want that book. And they reach out to the creator. Sometimes they have it. Sometimes they don't. Because yeah. you never know how many to print, and you also don't know how big and popular something's going to be. So, how does how do you uh, decide how many copies to print? Like, do you have an algorithm in your head? No, <laughs> I don't think there's a formula really. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you definitely have to print more than than you have backers on, on Kickstarter, of yeah. course, because, like you said, you want to continue selling them. So, for the role playing game, for instance, we had uh, we had around. 600 uh, copies to ship after the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and I I printed um, one uh, I printed printed a thousand copies, so I had 400 copies left. Of course, I mean it's a role playing game; it's a niche product, so you don't you don't sell as many uh, of those books as you sell comic books because comic books are more of a mainstream uh, product. Um, right. But so yeah, you, you you do have to print a bit more. But then if you're out of stock, like we are almost out of stock for the role playing game, well, you can you can always reprint. Um, oh. I would say that the minimum the minimum amount is 500 copies. Um, it, okay. it's, it's silly to print less because if you print less, you will basically pay the same price for less copies because um, uh, it's the it's starting the, the, the printing process that is expensive. And once it runs, um, uh, then printing 500 or a thousand makes almost no difference uh, in terms of. Uh, oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's just a bit more paper, but you know the machine is printing at a at a speed of of 15,000 copies an hour. So uh, if you if you print 500 or a thousand, it really makes no difference. Uh, it it goes almost as fast. So it's just a bit more paper that you need and a bit more ink. But but this is really. Uh, neglect neglectable in, in 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 the price the the thing that really makes the price is you have to set up everything before you can start printing and that takes time yeah so um how did you choose the printer this is something i've never asked how did you decide yeah. okay, that printer obviously of course cost right that that yeah. goes away but also how do you know quality of course cost? yeah yeah you're um, looking at cost but you're looking at quality because for role playing games and for comic books people are very very um uh, attentive to 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 the quality of of of, of the book you know mm -hmm. um uh and so, so yeah so you have to be careful you have to be mindful of that as well um i had um uh, it's just 
uh, someone gave me the, the, the contact information of a, of a printing company in Lithuania for the for the role playing book. Mm -hmm. So I printed I printed there. I went there actually. I took I, I flew over there to visit the the, the, the company uh, to be sure that because um, I used to be I used to work in a printing company. So so I, I I know a bit about that trade as well. So I wanted to visit the, the place to be sure that they had you know. Uh, the, the right the right equipment and so on um and and they did so i was reassured so they, they printed the book and i was very happy with the result but then for the comic book um just recently like a month ago i was i was looking at the, the comic book comic books in my collection and i was wondering where do they print those <laughs> right books? Mm -hmm. and so i started because you know on the first page it's always written where it was printed yeah and so um and so i do and i said oh but it's printed in belgium in, in my country hey and, and, and i was surprised because i thought these big companies they print a lot of books so it must be you know interesting for them to print abroad where it's cheaper you know they, they, they can make huge savings so how come they print in, in a country that is quite expensive and so i asked for um uh, for a quote from 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 that uh, printing company uh -huh. and it was actually not that much expensive uh, as compared to, to the Lithuanian company. So I visited them two weeks ago and um, and I decided to print over there because I mean, if, if you can support, you know, your local uh, local businesses, it, 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 it's always it's always better. Um, so, yeah, if the price is three times more and you are a small publisher, <laughs> you can't do that. But if the price is just a bit a bit higher, then I would rather print a uh, hundred kilometers from my place, you know, than than two thousand kilometers from my place. Absolutely, and you're you're close to what uh, quality control. Yeah, absolutely, and and they are they basically printed half of my collection. So I, I have over a thousand comic books, and and five hundred of them are, are coming from that company. So I know exactly what the quality will be. That's awesome. So, okay, interesting enough, um, you know, if, if ever I want to to publish my own comic book or print my own comic book, we have a printer like two um, two miles, so about uh, with so many kilometers here, yeah, uh, from my house. Yeah, that, but it would be yeah. so expensive because it's in America compared to like somewhere in Italy or or France, yeah. uh, where the where they're used to dealing in just big, huge bundles of, of work that they have. Um, yeah. So it's weird because, as as you said, I would love to to work with the printer that's like right in my town, yeah. but I think it would be so much more expensive. Because just out of curiosity, yeah. one day I, I kind of uh, hit them up because they're used to doing like uh, school books and uh, what else did they do? Road? I don't think they used to do road maps when that was a thing before uh, we had uh, these things, yeah. <laughs> GPS. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's really interesting to to see the cost. Of that, and that's why the big publishers like Marvel and DC do rarely publish in America. They look elsewhere sometimes outside of the country to yeah. publish their books, their big books. So usually, uh, it's somewhere in Europe or in Canada or Mexico is where the big printers are for for both DC and Marvel. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you have you have um, uh, advantages to to um, to. Uh, uh, I would say, uh, you know, free market and, and and being able to trade with the with the whole world, but then you have downsides as well. You know, advantages of that, of course. People are happy to have product that costs less, but the reason they cost less is because they are manufactured in a country yeah. where where people uh, are paid uh, fifty dollars a month. You know, so yeah, absolutely, uh, and, and that's the thing that a lot of people realize or don't realize sometimes when talking about big books and the cost of things going up it's why don't they bring it home like they should bring it in-house yeah. if you bring it in-house it would be twice as much because yeah. then you would be having to pay someone's salary someone's yeah. health benefits and exactly. then on top yeah. of that it's, it's here in america so there's yeah. all kinds of different taxes so, now, so some people some people are willing to do that you know that there, there's oh, yeah. I, I mean at least here in europe in western europe there is there is a new trend uh, you could say that you have more and more shops uh, opening where People know that they're going to pay more, but they know that they're going to buy local products, and and uh, you know, uh, people are paid a fair price and so on. Um, so, I like that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. 
but you have to be able to afford it, of course. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Um, so with everything going according to plan, and how long will the Kickstarter be? Like uh, we, we, three weeks. We off on okay, three weeks. Why why that short of a window? Just out of curiosity. So the um, the optimum duration on Kickstarter is four weeks. It's uh, I didn't know that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, that, of course that that's a, that's an average. So they just look at the successful campaigns, but mm -hmm. no matter what the product is. Right, so all products, uh, they just and they, just make, they, yeah, they just make an average, and it's twenty-eight days, something like that. Gotcha. Um, okay, but so you went, yes, yeah. uh, but I but I went so for the for the first two uh, campaigns that I that I launched, so for the book and for the app, uh, I did it for a month, right, mm -hmm. so almost uh, four weeks, but this time I decided to do three weeks because I'm running the other campaign on the other platform with the one week delay. Oh, uh, that's okay. also going to be three weeks. So in total, I will be busy, very busy for a month. And the thing is, when you do a, a Kickstarter campaign or a crowdfunding campaign, you barely sleep. <laughs> you know, I, it's, I, it's very, very stressful, and you're just watching the numbers every five minutes to see to see if, if you're going to reach your goal. You know, once you reach your goal, it's 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 better because okay, you're not that worried anymore. a little bit, but you still want to stay awake. Yeah, but until <laughs> until you reach the goal, you're it's very very stressful, and I didn't want to do like a month of Kickstarter and then another month on another platform. Oh my gosh, uh, that, you know, that and that. That is something that I do want to point out that I think it, it takes a lot for somebody to put themselves out there and to self-publish their books, whether it's through Kickstarter or Indiegogo or all these other uh, websites that do the same kind of thing. Yeah. It takes a lot to do that because there is always a chance that it's not going to get kickstarted. It's not going to get funded. And that, I mean, that hurts the creator's soul. And how do you keep how do you keep going? So I think it's amazing. So mad props to you. So anything I can do to help that that's really cool, man. I'm, I'm very excited for you and I'm very excited for the, I mean, the artwork here is amazing. It, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I've seen some of the internal pages that you've sent me, but I promise not to share those, but the, this, no, I mean, you, you can, I mean, you can show them. I don't mind, but it's just, uh, I, I don't want them to, uh, to, uh, <clears throat> circulate on, 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 uh, on Facebook, you know. Oh, I got, I got you, I got you. Yeah, yeah. But, um, uh, but this, this stuff here is gorgeous. So, what, in, what inspired this story? Was it when you were doing the tabletop? You were like, I still think I have more story based in this world. I want to keep going. Um, so there's, yeah. So this is the first book. I mean, it's it's meant to be a series. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Hopefully it won't be a series. Um, so this is the first book, so it's kind of setting up the stage for a lot of of, of uh, things. So um, of course, I mean, you meet the main characters, and then you just, um, uh, I mean, the, the the main plot is just starting, and there, there's kind of a backstory in the role playing book um, uh, that I used as the backstory for 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 this series. Uh, but uh, the backstory of the role-playing book is is more on a very uh, how to say on a very high level. So it's it's kind of like political in, intrigue between between um, between uh, kingdoms, you know. So uh, and and here the, the comic book is focused on on a, on, on twins on on two characters, the ones that you see on the screen. Um, so th they have like a story within the big. The big story, you know. Um, so I had I had the big story coming from the role playing book, and I I just came up with a, 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 another uh, yeah another story centered on those two characters who, who are a bit special because they 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 are from um, uh, as, as they are the unique. Um, uh, uh, how, how, I'm searching for my words. They are the only. They are the only ones of their species, right? Okay. So okay. yeah. So they they look different from 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 people around them, and uh, people around them make them feel that way. Did you? Um, this is gonna sound stupid, but did you play 
things like Dungeons and Dragons growing up. Or yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah, okay. I yeah I've, wanna... I've I've been playing those games for thirty five years, so uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a big, that's big a long part time. That's a long yeah. time. That's awesome. Good for you, man. That's great. Um, I you know I, I never got to play as a kid. I always wanted to. I was always jealous of my friends that had that kind of imagination. Uh, it wasn't until I got into my adulthood that some of my friends got together, and honestly, it was last year because of COVID, like that we started playing it. So I thought that was really cool. Like I always uh, wondered how many different stories, how many different comics, graphic novels, uh, TV shows, um, it, playing Dungeons and Dragons with your friends inspired. There's so many creators out there that have, you know, have told stories, whether it's comics or movies or whatever that started playing because the idea came from Dungeons and Dragons. I'm going to yeah. show just a couple of pages because I'm serious. This artwork is jaw dropping i wish i could do it justice by blowing it up but this is the highest definition i can show um but oh my gosh this is absolutely stunning i really like the artist's work and um what was the other book has that been translated in english the one that you held up earlier the Goblin? um well that's a good question i don't know how many languages they i know it's been translated in several languages but uh, i don't know if they yeah they probably translated it in english because this, this is a popular this is a popular series in europe so they probably translated it if only for the uk you know mm -hmm. um so that, it's, that, it's it's probably available in english that yeah. shot right there that's beautiful the yeah that's the, that's the first page yeah yeah so when does this go on uh, live? Let's remind everybody when this goes live. And again, first, the, of, first of November. First in, of November. And the link is in the description of this video. So please go and check out this Kickstarter. Uh, go and support Blade and all the wonderful folks that are putting this together. Because it, it looks like an amazing book. Uh, and there's going to be different tiers, you said, right, for different backers. Yeah, yeah, of course. The the, the first the first where this is this is the like really <laughs> really expensive ones um, mm -hmm. where you you get your own your own char character illustrated in the in the comic book, and you get of course a hand drawn illustration by the artist and and, and all the other stuff. But it starts at it starts at twenty four dollars uh, for the for the physical copy of the book. Okay. So there you guys have it, $24. Now, let's see. If y'all have any more questions, please go ahead and ask them. The important questions like Jordan Thomas, what's your favorite fruit? Mangoes. My favorite fruit, oh, that would be melon. Melon, just melons? Watermelon? Cantaloupe? No, no melons. Not, melon. not watermelons, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> actual, actual melons. Okay. Um, yeah, for me, I grew up in peru so definitely mangoes that's i've i've, I've had an acquired taste for that and then those things are hard to find here in the state of kentucky until like right around spring in the summertime mm. during winter and all that no mangoes anywhere yeah yeah, yeah. but we should all we should only eat uh, fruits during the right season you know otherwise it means they are coming from very far away they are and, coming from you away. know it's that's a right. lot of pollution to bring them here and uh Maybe they're going to Seattle where the people are going to be shipping your books. That's where all yeah. the mangoes are stored. Um, all my favorite bands are from Seattle. I have to go there uh, someday. It's a, it's a beautiful place. One of my favorite places uh, in the United States. I love it. But let's see if we got a couple more questions. And yeah, I know you, what you're, you're a trooper, man, because I know it is late. Over there. Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's it's my it's my passion, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be two a.m. soon here. Woo. What's your favorite court horror comic? That's a good question. I don't think I have ever read a really a horror comic. Oh, you have it? Mm. No, I don't think so. And actually, that's that's a that's a question I would have for the for the viewers. Um, for for someone like me who doesn't know uh, anything about about uh, about comics, uh, I mean about Marvel and DC comics, 
-hmm. apart from from the stuff that I saw, you know, uh, in the movie theater with the MCU. Um, um, what would be what would be a good starting point to make kind of a transition, you know, like uh, a link between between uh, the the kind of comic books that we have here in Europe and and uh, the, the 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 typical um, Marvel comics, you know. Well, that's a good transition. That's a good question because I've done I've done videos on my channel for if you like manga, these are the type of Marvel video Marvel comics you would like. Um, I have a list of DC comics, European comics. I mean, they, they tend to be, you know, different genres though. And like you have stuff like, oh, and I'm thinking of some of the top uh, selling ones, right? Like the top, the, the best ones. Whenever mm -hmm. I think of European comics, they think of things like uh, Tintin or uh, Black Sat seems to be really popular right now. Yeah, it is. It is. Right, yeah. oh, it's wonderful. Uh, yeah. See, I like things like the Smurfs or uh, <laughs> Uncal or. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. The, but those those are really classics, you know. But, but those are quite old. Right. And, I, and I'm trying to think know? of classics here in America that would kind yeah. of be sort of like that. Um, I would think a lot of the Duck comics, honestly, the transition would be easy to go to the Carl Barks or Don Rosa Duck comics. But as far as Marvel and DC, you would have to stick with something that that's kind of standalone that all in one that you don't is have it, to is it is it always about superheroes in in marvel and dc comics i mean do you um, only have superheroes sometimes but the the better known stories are the ones that are the most human like the most relatable to people right yeah uh, so something like marvels right told through the eyes of a guy that's a a reporter he's a photographer and it's the Marvel age, that silver age of Marvel comics told through his eyes. I think that's really cool. And that stands out. And I think the ones that stand out are the ones that are, like I mentioned, the most human. Yeah. I mostly stick to independence, not being on Marvel and DC. I was thinking of, yeah, independent stuff like uh, Vertigo or something from the Max line. Al Alias is a good one. Uh, Vertigo, of course, Sandman, Swamp Thing, things like that, Alan Moore's. Now, yeah. James is asking an important question. What are some of the collection editions that you have on your on your bookshelf? What kind of comics do you like? Graphic novels or collected editions that you like? Oh, on my shelves? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I would say it's 70% fantasy. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then probably 20% science fiction. And then 10% like other... Other, Other genre, you know, not not horror, not horror though. But not not horror. But but I'm I haven't even seen horror comic books in in, in the shops I go to. <laughs> I don't know if it's a thing here. Uh, the Walking Dead is popular. I know that was popular in Spain when I went a couple of years ago. All right. Oh, they they made they made a series based on the on the television series. Yeah. Well, the comics is what inspired the TV show. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't know it was that way. Or yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't so know that. I know that that one was popular when we went to Spain. It was popular in France, uh, but that was a couple of years ago. Hellblazer is a good one, and honestly, that I, I actually made a list of the best uh, uh, horror comics for beginners or people that want to get into horror comics. Right. Um, video that's going up this Thursday, and it was a hard choice between Hellblazer and Preacher, and I went with Preacher. Um, if he's looking into fantasy, recent uh, great ones are Last God. I just got that in. And finally, after months of waiting, and Seven to Eternity, which has a complete collection coming out next year. Once in Future, that's a good one. I was thinking of things like Prince Valiant. That's a classic, but it's beautifully drawn. That's a classic, like, comic strip comic. It's wonderful. Uh, Mouse Guard. Mouse Guard's another one I think you would really like. It's about little mice with swords. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. Man, it's, it's I'm, cool. I'm writing all that down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mice Templar is another one. That one's from Image Comics. That's another one that's Mice with Swords. Uh, you've read Black Sad, so I'm trying to think of something like Black Sad that is kind of like the American Black Sad, but all I can no, think of... I, it, it doesn't have to be like like European comics, you know. I, I was just wondering, because I know nothing about, about uh, what's popular in the U.S., 
I was uh, I, I was just wondering if there was anything else than super superheroes, you know, because when we talk about uh, Marvel and DC, oh, the only thing I can think of is is super. Okay, sometimes they don't have superpowers like Batman, but still they are still considered as superheroes, you know. Yeah, uh, his you, superpower is. Uh, you're superpower, right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, it is. It's more than just superheroes in America. It's gotten a lot bigger than superheroes in America. And I want to say in the last 10 years, it's gotten huge. Um, about 20 years ago, the bookstores, the book chain stores here, the big ones, they started changing the names of their setups. So instead of calling it, because uh, graphic novel used to mean something else back in the day. Graphic yeah. novel meant a comic that was originally released in this format. It was not a single issue before. That all changed about 20 years ago with the book market. The book market decided, hey, Let's take advantage of this boom in manga and let's start selling some American comics. So they started changing everything from comics to graphic novels. So the word mm -hmm. novel is still there, right? So you feel a little bit fancier going into a bookstore going, hey, yeah. the graphic novels section. Yeah. But it's comics. But yeah. um, it's it's gotten a lot bigger, man. It, it's crazy how much it's grown. And I think a lot of people have just – branched out from the superheroes some people have branched out from superheroes so much they don't want to go back to superheroes uh and then some people only have read independent comics it's, it's great yeah i've read sin city but that's probably the only one i, I i've read that's a, that's a classic yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, i it's, love that yeah. book i haven't read it yet but granville seems to to be like black said i haven't read that either now i'm writing that one down Lots and lots of non-superhero comics in the states. That's right. Yeah, we're getting we're getting uh, a lot more broader with our tape. I, I think people are starting to realize comic books are more than just capes and cows. Comic books are another medium, and the people that have realized that for the last twenty plus years are the people in Hollywood. They started borrowing ideas yeah. like tradition or uh, history of violence. These movies that are based on comics that. Really, people will be like, what? Road to Perdition is a comic book? Mm -hmm. No. Because yeah. they think comic books as Avengers. And those movies are, of course, huge blockbusters, right? Avengers course, and, yes. and Spider Man, those movies are huge. But there are movies like that, that like American or uh, History of Violence, uh, Road to Perdition. Uh, what was another one that I just saw recently that I was like, hey, this is a graphic novel? Oh, um, it, was, it was a bad movie, but it was M. Night Shyamalan's Old. It's based on the graphic novel. Okay. A lot of people realize that so yeah. really cool and tv shows like that why the last man based on the comic book it's great it, it, it's it's wonderful to be on this side going to tell your friends oh yes that was a comic book first you yeah. like that yeah yeah Saga okay, cool. yeah thanks for all the all the advice yep yeah i wrote i wrote that down so blade thanks. i want to thank you uh for being here tonight man well, uh, thank you for having me Absolutely. Um, again, everybody go and check it out. It goes live on November 1st. Let's help this book get funded. Bring some over here to America through Seattle. <laughs> yeah, it will be. Hopefully we will see more of your work out there. And if uh, and if ever you need anything, man, just hit me up. Shoot me um, shoot me an email. I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you help so out. much. Yes, America is uh, definitely a market you can tap for outside of superheroes they like oh, the, the big insane. publishers that the big publishers in france they've been trying to hit the, the u.s market for <laughs> for a decade but they they haven't well, managed yet this is a, a different topic but licensing is a nightmare apparently for the publishers here in america oh. it, it's it's not just a battle to try to get the rights to certain books but it's also has to do with publishers working together the publisher over in europe for example one needing to work with American publishers and American yes. publishers have their yeah. own standards. Yeah. So it's like, who gets a percentage of what numbers? Yeah, of yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and when yeah. you talk money, people lose yeah. interest and it's sad, yeah. but um, thank you so much, my dude, for joining me, everybody. Thank you all uh, for joining us for this live chat. Again, the link to the Kickstarter is in the description of the video. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. Blade, you're Thanks always welcome. Cheers.